Hello everyone, my name is James, and before I begin today's project, I would like to give a quick shout out to all of my patrons over at Patreon. I would also like to thank everybody who uses the product links that I put in the descriptions to purchase things that they need. It really helps support our channel. And of course, I want to thank all of my viewers and subscribers. I really enjoy seeing the comments and replying to those and getting some level of interaction with you guys. Thank you very much. Okay, now on to my project. My daughter is going to the Renaissance Festival this month and she wanted to take a sword with her. I've never really built a sword or anything like this before, so I looked up some pictures and definitions and shapes of some swords and sort of created an amalgam of what I thought one should look like. I wanted a light color wood for the blade, but I wanted it to be strong, so I chose maple. And I am going to put a fuller in the blade, which is the groove down the center. And I also thought I might put a little piece of inlay in there as well, just to make the piece a little bit more attractive. So I didn't really measure anything here, I just raised the blade up about a quarter of an inch and then I positioned the fence uh, about to the halfway point in the blade away from the fence itself. And then I cut the groove with one side of the board against it and then flipped it to the other side and that basically ensured that the, uh, the groove stayed in the dead center of the blade. So I just took a little measurement of what the width of the groove was, set my table saw fence that far apart and basically cut a little square out uh, with uh, using my micro jig here. It has one leg on the right side which is just an eighth of an inch thick. It allows me to cut real thin pieces out and I did a little test fit here. It actually didn't fit perfectly the first time and so I just gave it a real light sanding with my random orbit sander and it fit pretty snug after that. Uh, it actually fits so snug I probably could have just uh, hammered it in without glue but you know me I had to use glue so I did that and then tapped it in place. I thought the paduk here would make a really nice contrast with the maple and I, I cut the piece a little bit thicker than the depth of the groove and just took my random orbit sander, put some 80 grit on it and sanded it down flush to the maple. So I think that looks nice. I did make sure that it was deep enough so that if I cut this fuller into it, this uh, slight shallow depression down the center, that I still have a little bit of paduk showing. So I'm cutting the groove out on my router table here, but you could just as easily cut it out by hand uh, with a fence on your router. And this type of bit is called a core box router bit. And in the event that you're interested, I will put a link to that in the description. So for the next step, I'm going to actually go ahead and just cut the, uh, the bevels on the blade itself. I'm going to go ahead and cut this all the way through uh, my board here, the full length of the blade plus the handle. So from the perspective here of this shot, it makes it look like my daughter is helping me support that board uh, with her hands pretty close to the blade, but it was about 9 or 10 inches past the blade before she touched it. So hey, that's about it. I used the help of the micro jig there again to kind of hold it snug against the fence and get it cut on all four sides. Now I know most wooden swords aren't made with sharp edges, but you know my daughter was going to the Renaissance Fair and there might be somebody there from an enemy kingdom and she might need to cut them in half so you know I went ahead and put a good edge on it. And so this is kind of what it looks like at this stage. Uh, now what I need to do is to take some of those triangular edge pieces that were just cut off when I made the edge and cut those down to length and I want to glue those back on in order to turn the handle part of the sword back into a rectangle. It'll just make it a little bit easier to put the sword together. I know it seems silly probably to cut it off and then glue them back on, but this is really the fastest way to do it. In fact, this whole project is a pretty quick project. I think anyone can do it in, in an evening. It took me about two and a half hours to make it uh, in total. So since these uh, pieces are really triangles, I'm basically putting the edges of them right up at the apex, the, the thickest part of the sword, uh, instead of down at the bottom. And that's going to give me a flat surface. I think that will become evident here in just a few minutes. So this is Kyle. This is my older daughter, Maya's boyfriend. He's kind of helping me out a little bit on what this thing should look like. He knows more than I do about swords and he's kind of helping me out through the build process here. So I'm cutting up some wenge, that's the dark wood there, and some red heart uh, to put together for the cross guard of the sword. 
So for each step, I really only let it dry for a few minutes, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, and it was dry enough where it wasn't going to move, and then I could go on to build the next step. And uh, then when it was all done, I did let it dry overnight. And now I'm going to cut the, the blade part away from the handle, and we're going to get our handle down to the thickness that we want for the grip. Now you can probably see how we're turning the handle back into a rectangle and how putting those triangles onto it allowed us to get back to that stage. And this way we have in essence a full tang blade where the, 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 the blade material itself comes all the way through the handle to the bottom as opposed to making the blade with a short insert that would go into a handle. It's just a little bit stronger uh, to build it this way. And now I'm going to glue the cross guard together. I'm not going to glue it to the handle just yet because I want to be able to slide it on and off for some other operations. But you can see it's consisting of three parts. Uh, it's got a red heart on the bottom. Then Wenge is going to come in the middle on one piece on either side and then a layer of red heart on top. One thing that you should be aware of if you're going to work with exotic species of wood, many of them are very high in oil content, and that oil will prevent uh, glues and other adhesives from bonding properly. So you need to clean the surfaces off with acetone before you glue them. I did that off camera to save a little bit of time, but every time I work with an exotic, I clean the surface with acetone first and then glue it together. Here it's critical to have a very snug fit, so I just want to make sure that Wenge is pushed up tight uh, against the, the shaft of the handle. And of course if our cross guard isn't square, it's going to look goofy. It seems I have made it extra snug and I have to tap it out. But that's okay, it's better than having a piece that fits too loosely. I like the wood color and the arrangement in the cross guard, so I'm going to do the same thing for the pommel. Kyle sketched out a size that he thought it should be, and so I just grabbed a hole saw that was roughly that size and cut it from there. When I use a hole saw and I want to get a nice cut, I try to cut about a little bit maybe past halfway through the wood, uh, just enough so that the center bit goes all the way through. Then I can flip the piece over, realign that center bit up, and cut it from the other side, and then I get a real clean cutout. So take a look at this next cut here. I've been using a table saw for about 32 years and I'm pretty comfortable making a cut like this. I know where to put pressure and how to hold it. But uh, I would encourage you not to make any cuts uh, in your shop that you don't feel 100% safe and secure in or something that if you're not sure you can do it, find a different way to do it. Uh, a band saw would work for this. You could even use a hand saw. It requires a little more work, but uh, you need to do whatever's safest for you in your shop environment. And so these are the two thinner pieces of red heart, which are going to sandwich the wenge for our pommel. So I need to return to the uh, hole saw and do the same thing with them. There it is. 
So just like in the cross guard I had, the piece of wenge was kind of integrated in the same plane as the handle uh, or the hilt of the saw. And I'm doing the same thing here for the pommel. So I've got to cut this notch out so it fits around the uh, end of the, uh, the handle there. Okay, finally we're going to start making it look a little bit more like a sword. So what you might notice when you get to this point is that it's very thick at the end. Uh, because contouring the blade so far has just contoured the edges and so when we get to the thick the center part of the sword uh, it's obviously you know too thick to use like that because this is not a toy this is in fact a killing weapon so we're gonna have to take this over to the sander the disc sander and we're gonna have to bring this blade down to a proper point I know that there are a lot of woodworkers out there who don't like to freehand things because there's no real surety in, in getting it done right but one thing that I can tell you is this is a very easy uh, sharpen to do. It, you can do it very easily with a disc sander, just as easily with a belt sander. Just go slow uh, and take your time. It took me just a few minutes, maybe two minutes or three minutes uh, to get it done here. Uh, just take a little bit of material off at a time and you, you can shape it right down to exactly what you're looking for. Uh, never be afraid to attempt to do some tasks by hand. And so here I got all those burn marks off the blade. And one thing that I do, which you might know if you've seen some of my previous videos, is I go very aggressive with the grit. Especially if there are burn marks involved or I have pieces that are sitting at different levels and I've got to get them down flush, uh, I don't want to spend a half an hour or an hour sanding. So I put 60 grit on the random orbit sander and I had the burn marks off in just a matter of seconds. And then it was just a matter of going through the grits. I did, went to 80, uh, 100, 150, and 220. Uh, again, just a couple of minutes each, and it was all done. I know when I first started woodworking, I was always too scared to go with an aggressive grit because I was worried about scratching the surface. And I would start with something finer, and I, I would just sand for, it seems like, hours and hours to get a project done. And uh, now I guess my time is just too valuable to sand. So I go aggressive first and get it done fast. I guess I should mention real quickly, I'm not talking about a surface that's just come off of the planer and needs to be just dressed up. I'm talking about a surface that's burnt or we need to get it down to level. Anything that just comes off the planer, the first grit you can touch it with is, is 220, no problem. You don't have to start aggressive in those situations. Okay, enough sanding talk. So my cross guard is dry enough for me to cut it out. Um, the, the shape there, Kyle helped me design and I'm just cutting it out on the bandsaw. Okay, doggone it, more sanding talk. You know what the bandsaw does to these edges, uh, uh, or maybe you don't, that's okay, uh, but bandsaws are pretty aggressive. They leave a pretty rough edge, and so here again, I needed to start with something rough, so I started with 80 grit, and it got that smooth really fast, and then I worked back through the smooth grits. And I wanted to put just a very slight roundover on this. Uh, I think this is a 1 8 inch roundover. And you can probably see there I accidentally have my bit set too high. And it started to give me a little bit of a bead. Uh, but the red heart is actually a very soft wood. And I'll be able to sand that little bead look off and just keep the small roundover. Okay, yep, there's my 13-year-old. Uh, this was kind of supposed to be a secret for her, but the secret's out, and so now she's in here photobombing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, now that the cross guard is all shaped and sanded, it's time to put it back on. I'm going to slide it all the way to the front, make sure that it does look good. Then I'll back it off a little bit, we'll glue it thoroughly, and put it back in place permanently. And we'll do the same thing with the pommel. We'll go ahead and permanently glue that in place now too. And it looks like I got just exactly the right amount of glue on it. And here I'm going to cut the sides of the handle uh, from Wenge. You can see how the micro jig comes in handy with that thin edged side over there. It lets me cut right up next to the fence and cut a pretty thin piece off. And micro jig doesn't sponsor me, I just like the tool. Okay, so now we can see that the pommel is round, uh, but the handle is flat, square. So I'm just going to trace a line there and cut that off. And I'm using a dovetail saw here. It's actually a Japanese pull saw, and it's just a, a fantastic saw. This is an old beat-up one I've probably had for 10 years or so, and it works great for all kinds of small cuts like this. And so I just want to mark the other side and I'll take it over to the chop saw to cut it off. So we're just going to repeat the exact same procedure for the other side. And if you've seen my videos before, you know that I like to use lots and lots of glue. I bl glue both sides, uh, every surface, and then clamp it together. Of course, we always have to spend extra time cleaning off that excess glue, but one thing I know for sure is that, that every square uh, inch of surface area in there is thoroughly glued together. Okay, so I wanted to dress the sword up just a little bit more, and I came up with the idea of putting these diamond shapes on the hilt, uh, one up high and one down low on each side. So I've kind of traced out what I wanted on one of the boards, um, and then I'm going to put them together, all four of them together at the same time, with some double-sided tape. And then I'm going to cut them off on the bandsaw all at once. We use a lot of this double-sided tape in the shop. It's very handy to route two pieces to get them to match perfectly or to do a bulk, a bulk cut with the bandsaw, things like that. So I drew a couple of designs on there and I decided that uh, we were going to cut out the longer of the two. Okay, so it's my older daughter Maya who's cutting them out, but uh, same thing, we're getting it done.
And I'm using the disc sander uh, to get all the burn marks out. You can just as easily use a random orbit sander or even a hand sander. So right about here, I decided that it was sticking out too much. It was a little bit ugly, so I really wanted to bevel those edges down. Uh, so I'm going to do that after I round over the handle. And I'm using a 3 8 inch radius round over bit for this. I wanted something a little more substantial of a round over that's going to make the grip a little more comfortable. I know when you're swinging a sword in a life or death situation, you want the, uh, the handle to be as comfortable as possible. Alright, so I'm going to go back to the disc sander to chamfer those down. So I've lowered uh, the bed here to 45 degrees and I'm just basically moving the piece, uh, keeping it flat to the bed, and moving it up to the sander until the, the outermost line touches the sanding disc itself. And this is going to completely chamfer those edges. And you can see what that looks like here in just a second. I think this will give it a much flatter and neater look on the sword handle. And it has the added convenience of covering that ugly hole that happened when I cut out the round circle on the hole saw. And all I'm really doing is kind of positioning these by eye, making sure that they look like they're in the right spot, and putting them on with glue. I kind of held the sword up at a distance uh, and looked at it uh, to make sure that they looked like they were straight and in alignment with one another. And then I clamped them up for about 20 minutes. Glue has a very interesting property. If you squeeze the adhesive down, squeeze the glue down so that the adhesive compresses into the wood fibers and you get a good strong squeeze, after not even a minute, it actually becomes very hard to move a piece around. So you might try that sometime if you're in your shop and see how that works. But put two pieces of wood together, squeeze them together really tight, near to, with glue of course, squeeze them together really tight. Uh, and just hold it for maybe 30 seconds and see how, how difficult it is to take them apart. Okay, so now looking at the piece from the end, I've sort of discovered an eyesore. Uh, the way the cross guard comes together, we can still see a bit of the handle there. So I'm going to use a little trick here. I'm going to use this blend fill stick made by Minwax. They come in a great variety of colors and they'll match just about any wood out there and you can even mix and match these together to get exactly the color that you want. It's like a wax, a putty or a wax. It, uh, it doesn't actually dry, uh, but you just take it, squeeze it into the surface uh, that you're trying to fill and it will just kind of blend and match and uh, it's almost as if uh, the, that was wood in that location. It looks really good. Then I sort of just rub it in to blend it into the wood after I get it cut off flush. And, uh, and it really goes a long way to looking like it belongs there. And it covers up an eyesore pretty nicely. And sometimes the wax from that stick will rub over onto a lighter piece of wood and you'll need to sand it off. And that's not too hard to do. So I'm just giving it a real light final sand of 220 grit and then I'm going to finish it with lacquer. I'm going to take it outside. It's a really nice day out. Uh, lacquer dries, dries extremely fast outside. I like to use Deft, D-E-F-T, lacquer. Um, over the years, lacquer has sort of uh, become my go-to finish. It dries to a rock hard finish. It dries really fast. It's very easy to put on a lot of coats. And if you make any mistakes, uh, it's easy to sand off and fix. Um, once all the lacquer is done, I usually put about three coats. Uh, I end up sanding lightly between coats and then after the last coat, I'll just uh, touch it real lightly with some 2000 grit sandpaper. And that's really all it takes for the project. And now for the most important part of the project actually. Uh, my daughter's about to take this sword uh, to the Renaissance Fair where she could meet her mortal enemy. And you really can't take an untested weapon into battle. So we're going to have to practice killing some things with it.
So it may be evident that we are not experts with the sword, but I think with a bit of training, uh, we'll soon be able to cut a bullet in half mid-flight with this sword. Thanks for watching my video, everyone. 